Hello, my name is Jarg and welcome back to another installment of Jarg Teaches Java. Now last time we got our server set up, that's all we did, because we needed to test things locally, or we're going to need to test things locally. We tested it worked, I disconnected it from uh, from Minecraft at this point, I just wanted to have this up for, for this beginning part because of course it is vital that you should stop your server correctly by typing stop into this window, press enter and it will save everything as it needs to, saving all the chunks for the various bits and bobs that have edit, been edited in-game. Uh, so that's what I've done there. So I'm just going to close that. So there's our server. It's um, this, this command file here is what we're going to use to start it up. You can see it's created a single folder called plugins, which has absolutely nothing in it at the moment. I am going to create another, go into that folder and create a folder called update, because that's used automatically if you um, put plugins in in your plugins folder and then you later update them, you can pop them in the those updated versions in this folder. And when you restart your server or reload the server, it will update the plugins automatically with those newer versions. Um, you can of course just plug, uh, drop them straight in the plugins folder itself, but that doesn't always work because some of them are in use constantly. It doesn't just load them and then store them in memory and close them again. So that's what we've got going on there. So we have our server. Now I'm not going to need that for a moment. What I am going to need is I'm going to need to show you where you can get a suitable development environment. Now, there are many. I recommend NetBeans, but it's one of many. Uh, another popular one is called Eclipse. You can Google that to find the particular one that you want. So Eclipse Java IDE Integrated Development Environment. So I'm going to suggest NetBeans. It's the one I'm most familiar with. Some of the tutorials on the development wiki of the bucket site, which again I'll put that link in the video description. Um, some of those use Eclipse and they show you Eclipse specific things. Well I'm going to use this so the, um, because they're mostly the same but uh, NetBean seems a bit more fluid in the way that it works. So you download this, it's kind of a large-ish package of stuff um, there are versions for Windows, there's versions for various other operating systems indicated here. I'd, if you have the space, I'd recommend getting the all package because it doesn't just do Java, it does other things, C, C and C++, PHP, it can do HTML stuff, it's got some web server stuff built into it. Download this, it will go into your downloads with everything else and then you can just double click it and install it. Let it go with all the defaults in all the default places because that way you don't have to reconfigure paths if you've got the space for it. I, I recommend that. Um, it is a Java development environment so it's kind of slow because uh, at least on most systems because the first time you run it it has to kind of finish off building the various bits of Java. Well uh, so I've got it installed here already. Um, I've got a quick launch icon down there. Uh, obviously I could slap up the shortcut on the desktop. It also appears in the applications business somewhere. Uh, there it is. And there's various versions that I've got installed there, but there we go. Um, you should always grab the latest version of it because that way you're guaranteed to have as, as up-to-date software as you could possibly want. Now, um, I'm, I've am i already used it a few times, so it's got the... Um, the sizing that I've required here. I've got nothing open because I wanted to start from scratch. Obviously I've got quite a ton of other bits and pieces of code around that I'm going to need to talk about. So I've got the IDE, I've installed it, here it is, it's running marvellous. Now at the moment it's not entirely usable. I need to hook it up to another bit of software which is called the the Bucket API. Now before I get to that I'm going to go into my documents here and I would recommend that you set up like a projects folder of some sort because that way you can keep track of all of your uh, plugin development. Now I'm going to call this what uh, plugins, that's a good name, and I'll make a Java pr uh, project group out of that in a minute. Um, within there, mm, actually within here, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it bucket API. Uh, it may not like spaces, don't know. Um, so bucket API. Now an API is a set of ready-made um, bits of code or descriptions of how you can hook into ready-made bits of code that have already been written for you. Now, someone has already written 
um, this, obviously, because that's what Bucket is all about. It's providing you as a developer with ready-made bits of stuff that you can just make use of. Now, um, I don't have a link to this directly, so I'll just have to go boink in here. Uh, if you go directly to the Bucket website and go to the download site, which is this, um, if you click on Craft Bucket, oh, I didn't mean to do that. If you click on Alternate Versions, or indeed these things down here, Bucket, you can see these are the latest development editions of Bucket with the latest um, API, the latest changes they've made. As well as Bucket Craft Bucket itself, which is the server, there's also something called Bucket on its own down here. And this is the API, the upstream artifacts. You just click on this and it say, well, do you want to download this? Yes, you do. Now, because I'm using the uh, release build, the recommended build, I should really, oh, I'm clicking randomly. Um, I should really use a version of the API that matches it. So I'm just going to go back there. So I think that was this one. So if I click on this build and then choose the upstream artifact here, that it will match with what I've downloaded. So um, if I click on this, I think, yep, I should be able to go there. And then I want to download this. Now, again, I'm going to download it into not my server folder, but my bucket API folder that I generated earlier. So that's in my documents and then it's in projects and then here. And I just want to keep track of it. It's called bucket.jar. Um, so there we go. So that will download. It's not a very big file, not by comparison with the server itself. Well, I guess it is actually. It's about half the size of it. Um, and when you consider that this particular Java file doesn't do anything, it's just a table of contents of ready-made bits of code that you can hook into, I guess that's kind of a surprising size. So I've downloaded that. It's now in my Bucket API folder. All right, so I created the plugins folder that's not got nothing in it and my Bucket API folder that has this Java file. Now if I go back to my development build here, or my integrated development environment, I should say. I can close all these windows and maximize this. Um, I can now start setting up projects or project groups. Now, the a project group allows you to group together related projects in NetBeans. Uh, I'm going to choose a folder full of projects. I haven't got any yet, but uh, this will allow me to save those um, in a more sensible location and to open them all at once. So I'm going to go into, uh, where was it? It was in projects. Uh, but it's in plugins. I'm going to group everything together in here. If I open that and choose create group, it just sets up a plugins group. No extra no stuff here yet because I haven't got any projects within it. It just groups them together. Now, uh, how do I create a project? Well, in NetBeans, that is extremely easy. And that is what we're going to do next. Goodbye.